We have followed the Carter family since January of last year after they filed a lawsuit claiming the facilities in which Lauren lived subjected her to the unthinkable, including an inexplicable slit throat. Lauren has a 30-year history of neglect and documented abuse. Lauren's father tried to have cameras installed in facilities, but they rejected his requests. He tried to care for his daughter at home, but county-administered Medicaid waiver funds compensate families at a lower rate than they do facilities. We brought Lauren's story to advocates, administrators, and legislators, and finally one heard the Carter's cry for help. State Representative Sarah Carruthers from Hamilton just introduced HB 465, Lauren's Law. It forces facilities to allow cameras in residents' rooms, and it provides payments from the Medicaid waiver program to families caring for loved ones at nearly the same rate it pays facilities. How's it going to change your world? That means we don't have to... Um, involve ourselves in provider searches on a recurring basis. It gets rid of the risk of the county replacing us with someone who could put my daughter's life in danger. The Sedano family cares for 15-year-old Mimi. They produced a documentary about her to expose the plight of families like theirs who say they need to scratch and claw for county-administered Medicaid waiver funds. The individual counties are now in charge of deciding who is the best caregiver for the child. It could be a stranger from an independent care agency. Um, once they've exhausted those options, then and only then can the parents be considered. But the bill could face opposition. While the Ohio Association of County Boards of Developmental Disabilities has not stated a position on HB 465 yet, it successfully argued against similar efforts in the past. The association says counties need to maintain control to police financial and perhaps even physical abuse. When the, when the association county board says families might, could, maybe, okay, but it's happening now in these facilities that they bless. The argument against paying families even 90% of what facilities get is that families don't have the same expenses facilities have, insurance, specialized equipment, facilities. But families say that shouldn't concern taxpayers. The same amount of money is getting expended per developmentally disabled person, whether it goes to the family or the facility, and they say their loved ones are better served at home. Dwayne? Very important story. Thank you, David. The bill was, by the way, introduced yesterday. Representative Carruthers says she expects it will go to committee next week. You can always find our local 12 stories right here on YouTube. Don't forget to tap subscribe and then you can get all the notifications.